here. Today I want to talk about my next sewing project. So every year Foundations Revealed has a little themed contest and you can either enter a single garment or an entire ensemble and it's also based on your skill levels. This year the theme for Foundations Revealed is characters from literature. Now I understand that Mary Poppins is kind of a very expected choice but I think that I want to put my own spin on it and this is a project that I've been planning on doing for a while now. I'm not really expecting to win anything, so I'm not super worried about perfectly fulfilling the requirements of the contest. For me, this is really more of an excuse to just actually make something fancy, since throughout the entire pandemic, without anywhere to go, I've been making a lot of everyday clothes and nothing that's really for special occasions. So let's talk about the concept. Like I said, I want to do something that's based on Mary Poppins, but I don't want to do a costume that is directly from the films. I'd rather do something that I think is something that Mary Poppins would wear on screen. So I chose to base my design on the Jolly Holiday Cafe at Disneyland. I was really inspired by all the Queen Anne trim that's on this building, as well as the white and yellow striped umbrellas. I really thought that this building is just so cute altogether. I know for sure that I want to base everything in the year 1906. So when I looked into Mary Poppins and what year it was supposed to be set in, it says 1910. While 1910 is absolutely a fantastic year for fashion, I don't really have any resources or patterns for that era. Whereas because of my house cosplay that I did earlier this year, I already have a few patterns that are suitable for 1906. So let's talk a little bit about the design, starting with the skirt. I think that I want the skirt to really match those umbrellas and I think it would look totally fantastic in a scallop edge pattern and every other panel will be yellow and then white so it will match the structure of the umbrellas. I think that in order to evoke that idea of that Queen Anne trim that's on the building, I'm also gonna do a little bit of soutache in a contrasting color for each of the panels. Next, let's talk a little bit about the design for the blouse. So I'm going to use this truly Victorian country blouse as a really good starting point. It has that very classic Edwardian look where it bows out in the front. I'm also considering making a jacket, but I think I'm going to cross that bridge when I get to it. And finally, I know for sure that I'm going to make a hat, but I don't really have any design plans for it just yet. For right now, I think I'm just gonna focus on the skirt and get all of those panels cut out. This skirt will be made out of two layers of fabric. The inner layer is a cotton organdy, which is a kind of really stiff cotton to help the skirt keep its shape. And the outermost layer, of course, is going to be the fashion fabric, which in this case is just a simple cotton twill. I started by cutting out each of the pattern pieces for the 1906 Tengor princess skirt as is. All of the panels are roughly the same size, so visually each scallop should appear to be the same. Unfortunately, the panels aren't perfectly identical, so I couldn't just sketch the petal once and be done with it. I had to do each scallop individually. After I got each scallop cut out, I used wash away interfacing to put the soutache design on the front of each of the yellow panels. Applying soutache can be kind of tedious, but I love how quickly the design comes together. what happened was I had this yellow fabric that I did not want to cut into until I was completely certain of the pattern that I wanted to use for this garment. So I made a prototype. It turned out to be the wrong silhouette. So I made another muslin which seemed perfect. I had to make some slight changes to the sleeve so I cut it out in what I thought was going to be the final fabric. However, <laughs> Now that the fabric and the skirt are next to each other, the fabric, I'm like staring at it. The fabric is reading as very cream rather than what it actually is, which is a white fabric with a very pale yellow stripe on it. From about four feet away, you can't tell that it has a stripe at all. Instead, the yellow just reads like cream, which is perfectly cute, but completely wrong for this project. So, if anyone has been keeping tally, I am now on blouse number four for this project. 
So I think I'm just gonna put this part of the project aside and move on to working on the jacket for a little while. I think I'm going to start with the Eaton jacket and make some changes to probably the sleeve and possibly add some soutache as well as a fake button placket down the front. I cut most of the pieces for the jacket as is, but I left out the sleeve knowing that I would be drafting a new one. In order to get that contrasting button placket panel, I traced the jacket front onto some scrap paper, and then I used a ruler to extend the front and get the new shape that I would need for the placket. I tend to use the same few soutache patterns all the time, but the pattern I usually use for the back of jackets was already used on the scallops. So I ended up adapting a new pattern for this jacket from a design that I saw on Pinterest. It's much simpler than the design I normally use, so I'm not sure that I really see myself using this pattern much. I forgot to film the process of drafting the sleeve, but it's a pretty standard sleeve pattern that looks like this. The only difference is that it's a lot wider than a normal sleeve, so it will be nice and puffy at the end. I also lined the sleeve with organdy to give it some extra volume, so from here all I really need to do is gather the top and bottom edges of each sleeve and then attach them to the shoulder and then the cuff. Okay, I'm back with a quick update and I just had time to finish the jacket and I'm really quite pleased with how it came out. <laughs> okay, I cannot believe I'm saying this. I think I'm going to use a blouse that I already have. And I have spent so much time on the blouse for this outfit and I could have skipped. I've made three blouses and was planning on making a fourth, but I just don't think that I can make yet another blouse for this project and not lose my mind. Um, so the next and final thing that I need to work on for this project is, of course, the hat. So I would not say that um, millinery, which is hat making, is necessarily one of my strong suits, but I think that the era really demands it and outfits just don't look finished unless they have a hat. So I'm going to use this pattern by Angela Clayton, who is one of my favorite pattern makers, and I'm going to get a little wild this time and actually read the instructions and see if that solves any of my hat making problems. The thing that I'm most excited for is trimming the hat. So I can't wait to start piling feathers and bows and charms and everything else I can think of on top of this hat. The sign in front of the cafe is one of the prettiest parts of the building, but I couldn't really think of a good way to incorporate it into the outfit, so instead I decided to make the sign and use it as set dressing. Okay, so before I sign off for the day, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of wrap up. I completely forgot to film this portion of the video before I change out of my Jolly Holiday outfit. So you get to see me in my only other Disney bounding costume. I am a Mickey waffle. I don't know why other people go to Disneyland, but for me, it's definitely about the food. Anyway, I'd love to talk a little bit about all of the things that went really well on this project and some of the things that didn't go so well. I think that the skirt turned out absolutely perfect. I think that the soutache really does evoke that idea of the Queen Anne trim. I think the scallops really look like the umbrella. 
I just think overall that the skirt kind of came out exactly how I wanted it to. I think overall the jacket also came out pretty well. In regards to the blouse, that is a little bit uh, not so successful, obviously, since none of the blouses that I had originally intended to make for this project actually ever came to fruition. It's kind of a lesson in why paying attention to historical accuracy is actually kind of important sometimes. I am absolutely not the kind of person that really worries about historical accuracy all that much. Yes, I try and be accurate in the patterns that I use, I try and be accurate in my color schemes and things like that, but I have no problem using modern fabrics, I have no problem finishing my garments in a modern way, and I have no problem mixing eras when I think that they'll go well together. Unfortunately, in this case, mixing together two different years was absolutely not the right choice. So I thought that a blouse from 1903 and a skirt from 1906 would go together just fine because those two years are not that far apart. Well, the silhouette of the blouse and the silhouette of the skirt absolutely do not make sense together and they were completely wrong. The blouse has a really classic Edwardian drape so it like poofs out in the front and kind of like hangs down and the skirt is such a high-waisted skirt that it's essentially like an empire waist. It goes all the way up to the top of the rib cage. And so when you have this really low drooping front and you have this really high-waisted skirt, essentially if you were to try and wear those two things together, you end up having to tuck the drooping part like into your skirt. It doesn't make any sense. These two articles of clothing cannot be worn together. I guess lesson learned is that while it is okay in my mind to mix eras sometimes, you have to be really careful and understand really thoroughly what it is that you're mixing. So next time, maybe I'll stick to one year at a time. The other thing that I think I could probably have improved upon for next time was definitely the hat. I actually think that this is the most well-made hat that I have ever personally made. What I didn't like about it was that actually, again, it doesn't really look like most of the hats that you see in 1906. Most of the hats in 1906 were a lot flatter and they kind of just like, like stuck to the front of your head kind of like this. And so this just doesn't really look like what you normally see in 1906. So yes, this hat did exist. I was able to find a handful of fashion plates that had a similar style of hat. But for the most part, this is not really the hat that people were wearing in 1906. So I wish that I had been a little bit more careful and chosen something that better evokes the period. I also think that I way over trimmed that hat. <laughs> Whoops. I was reviewing the footage while editing this video and I saw myself like sticking floral to it. And I was like, no, 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 stop, stop. Right there is good. <laughs> And I wish that I hadn't just like kept piling more and more and more stuff on top. In the end, it was, it was way too much. And overall, I think that the outfit had a really nice effect and I think it accomplished what I wanted it to. I think it does remind me of Jolly Holiday. I would love to wear it to an event sometime, like out into the world. <laughs> I think that it's probably gonna be a really long time before that's possible though. On the other hand, I am so happy with it that this is the kind of thing that I think is definitely going to stay in my closet until I'm ready to wear it somewhere. I think that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.